Hello everyone and welcome to another Mate Nathan video. In this video, I'm going to be looking at 10 games that are great, but I just don't want to play them anymore. So for this list, what I tried to do is look at games that when I first played them, or maybe after the first couple times of playing them, I thought this is a very good game and I enjoy it. I would like to play it again. But now, sometime later, for whatever reason, the thought of playing these games again just doesn't excite me even though I recognize that there are some good mechanics here and, and some really great games. So let's jump right in and take a look at these 10 games. Uh, I did organize the list in order of games I would be most interested in playing again, down to the least. So the number one and two games are games that I probably will never play again, while nine and 10, I could see a chance that I would. And coming in at number 10 is actually a game genre although I do have a couple examples. And this is miniatures games. Now, I like miniatures games. The first few times I played them, I thought it was a wonderful experience. Building armies, coming up with strategy, the way the board can be laid out to really captivate you and take you into that world is wonderful. However, miniatures games have such a high cost, requires so much dedication, and you need a play group or a partner that'll really put that time in to make the game enjoyable. A couple examples specifically from my back catalog is War Machine. War Machine came out in 2003, back when I was in college, and a lot of groups down at my local comic book store on Friday Night Magic started to get into this game, and I jumped right in. Uh, I never was interested in Warhammer, the little plastic miniatures, huge armies of hundreds of miniatures. It just seemed like too much. But War Machine were army groups, more like small skirmishes, with just a few miniatures strategically fighting each other. Not to mention these miniatures were made of metal instead of plastic, which really hyped up my excitement for it. However, after several years, they started switching the miniatures to plastic, I started moving away from my group of people I played with. It was harder to get people into it. And then they ended up changing the rule set and I kind of fell out of it. The same goes for another game, X-Wing, the miniatures game. I got back into miniatures game with this in 2015. This game originally came out in 2012. I love the IP, I love Star Wars. And I jumped right into this. Collecting the ships that were pre-painted was wonderful. I loved putting them up on my shelf, and the skirmish dogfighting combat was wonderful. The only reason I jumped out of this game is again they did a second edition rules overhaul, which is fine. However, I looked that it would cost me two, three hundred dollars to upgrade all my ships to the new rule system, and that just wasn't for me. So in general, miniatures games, while fun and awesome, I just don't see myself getting back into them. Coming in at number nine is a game from one of my favorite designers, Alexander Pfister. Um, I love his game, Mombasa, Great Western Trails, such a good game. When I jumped into Maracaibo, however, I had a good experience. I played it one time and I thought it was fine. However, when I think of coming back to this game, it just doesn't excite me. I'd rather go to some of his other titles. Maracaibo does have some fun. It's, it's a giant rondelle, basically, of moving your little ship around, doing the actions. It's got a race feel. Whoever gets to the end first kind of ends the whole round. So you have that mechanic working for you. You get cards, you get to upgrade your ship and your abilities. There's a lot of fun mechanics here, but it just seemed there was too much going on, not enough payoff for what it was. So it's just kind of forgettable, and I moved on. Coming in at number eight is a classic game that a lot of old school board gamers will tell you is a must play, and that is El Grande. El Grande is one of the first, or maybe the first type of area control or area majority game. You're basically putting these cubes down in these different regions in Spain, and by controlling these regions, you get some bonuses. There's even, even some uh, action selection as you kind of drafting these cards or choosing these abilities. A lot of really cool mechanics went into this game and kind of set the bar for it. However, again, this game came out in 1995, 
And I just feel there's a lot of games that do this better now. If someone set this game up and asked me to come over and play, I probably would. But I'm not going to seek out a chance to play it again. Coming on in number seven is a game that's, I guess, officially pronounced Twa, although some might look at it and say Troy's. Uh, and Twa is a game by Xavier George, if I'm saying that right. But he's a designer of some of my favorite games as well. Carson City, love that game. Ginkopolis, also a good game. Uh, in Twa, you are basically doing uh, some dice actions. You're rolling dice, you're drafting dice, trying to control different city regions. To be honest, I kind of forget. I've only played this game once, maybe twice, and as soon as the game was over, I didn't really take anything from it. It's a game that I actually had to look at, look back up on BoardGameGeek.com just to kind of remember what it was when I put it on this list. That's kind of how forgettable it was for me. There's a lot of people who love this game, and I bet if I played it again, I probably would have a good time. But if a game can't grab me so much from the beginning and make me want to play it and think about it day after day afterwards, why go back to it when there's so many other great games? So my number seven, Twa, kind of forgettable. Coming in at number six is a game that I should love. It's got deep, rich strategy and mechanics. It's got a very interesting theme worker placement in it, and that is Tricarion. came out in 2015, an illusion game where you play as magicians and you send your apprentice magicians around to different stores buying things you need for your, your tricks, your show, and then I can't remember if it's every round or at the end of the game, you put on a big show and try to get these, these glory points, the stage points from putting on this show. So many neat things went into this game. However, all I really remember about it was the rules overhead. So many rules. We were constantly going back to the rule book. I didn't feel it flowed good. It felt clunky. Now, maybe if I had invested more time learning the rules myself instead of just being taught, or maybe if it had grabbed me more and I felt interested to read the rule book after playing it so my next experience would be even better, maybe I would enjoy it. But as I said, if a game can't grab you, and transports you into that world, or at least function streamlined enough that you feel like you're accomplishing things, then what's the point? And with this game, it just didn't work for me. And so I don't really want to go back to it. Coming in at number five is a game I really did enjoy a lot. And I remember it very fondly from the times I played it. And that is Dead of Winter. This came out in 2014. I remember when I first played Dead of Winter a couple years ago, I was blown away. This whole concept of maybe being a betrayer, how you have to work together but not work together. The theme seemed very exciting to me at the time as I was kind of a new board gamer four or five years ago. And I remember liking it a lot. However, it was hard to get people to play it and get into it. It was kind of hard to explain it a little bit. And it was hard to get a big enough group to play it, at least for me in those first couple years that I was aware of it. And while I do think it's a good game, the whole social deduction aspect of this game I think is done better in different games that I find myself really struggling to think of I would ever go back to this. I also remember being a lot longer for what it was. And if I'm going to invest that much time into a game, I kind of want a little bit more of a payoff. It was almost too much story, but not enough story. Too much game, but not enough game. And so I think I can do better. Conan number four is a game that I enjoyed a lot the first four or five times I played it. And this is a, a legacy game, a campaign game, by one of my favorite designers and one of my favorite production companies, and that's Charterstone. Charterstone was given to me as a gift for some very close friends, and we played through nine of the campaigns. I think there's only 10 or 12. There's not that many. We almost got to the end. but. Towards the end of the game, it started feeling tedious. The actions didn't seem that exciting. The constant bookkeeping to look up new cards and stickers to put on the board. The rules were, were so concerned with trying to not spoil anything in the game that it kind of didn't teach you the game very well. I had to do a lot of research just to figure out how to play it, and I don't want to have to do that. But it was enjoyable for the first couple plays, but if a campaign game, if a legacy game, can't hold you in for that entire campaign and make it feel worth it to come back to it, 
what's the point? I can see why people would like this game, and I can see why people like legacy games. This one just didn't do it for me. Moving on to number three is another game in a similar vein, and that's Time Stories. Time Stories is a game where you're trying to figure out a mystery of some sort. And I've only played the first scenario. I haven't played any of the expansions. And it took us several attempts to get through the first scenario, which is what the game is supposed to do. You go through a scenario, you make mistakes, and then you reset and start over. And you learn from those mistakes to do better the next time. And that's fine. However, this word tedious comes up again. While I enjoyed it going through the second, or maybe third time, I can't remember if it took us three or four to finish it, but by the end of it, I just felt like we were going through motions to try to get to some other point. And if a game is making you repeat yourself so much that you really just feel like you're going through motions and you're not uncovering something or getting a reward for it, what's the point? So I can see why people like it, but it's not for me. Probably not going to go back. Coming in at number two is a area control warish game. I've struggled a lot to try to find games like this I like. I think this is a genre I should enjoy, but a lot of these games bounced off me for a long time. But this was one that when I played, I really loved, and that's Cry Havoc. Probably the most interesting part about this game is it has asymmetrical powers for the different factions that help you uh, gain resources or control the board, and it has a very phenomenal combat system. Uh, I believe there's some blind bluffing going on there, setting where your soldiers go uh, to get these different benefits with these cards. It was really, really neat. However, as I started to go more into the genre of these area control warish type games, skirmish games, I realized that Cry Havoc had a lot of problems with it as well that were fixed and streamlined in other games. And Cry Havoc just didn't stick with me. I thought about coming back to it, but the more I did, the more I just didn't see the point. There were better games that did better things. It's my number two, Cry Havoc. And coming in at number one of great games that I think are really good, but I just probably won't play again. My number one pick is Descent, the second edition. I remember when I first played this game several years ago. Wow, a lot of fun. Great dungeon delving game. Playing with your friends, playing against one of your friends as an overlord. We even did a slight, a slight modification where we kind of took turns being the overlord uh, as we went through the campaign. So everyone kind of had a chance to sit in that seat. I had a lot of fun with my friends playing with this. But as the campaign kept progressing, I kind of noticed that we started rules, not rules lawyering, started quarterbacking, started alpha playing. Players would start to realize different combos and, and try to tell other players how to play their characters. Because it was cooperative in nature, it was kind of easy to know what the right answer was. And as soon as that started happening, I kind of lost the interest in the game. If one person can just make these decisions, why do I need to be there? So it kind of lost its luster. More so it lost its luster because other games, again, came out that did this better. I'm thinking Gloomhaven where, yes, you're working together in a, in a co-op-y way, a semi-co-op way. However, you can't have that alpha player. With Gloomhaven, your actions are cards that players can't see, and you get to choose what you want to do, and you can't share that information. Where in games like Descent, everything you can do is face up on the table. It's easy to strategize together, which kind of is a hindrance in those situations. I respect Descent. I think it's a wonderful game. But I can't imagine myself coming back to this game when there are just games that do it better. In fact, I think that's an idea for another list. Looking at games that I enjoyed, but there's better versions out there. That if you like these games, maybe you should try these. Stick around for my next video, and I'll dive into that topic. And as always, like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.